You may have heard of bad Olympic Games. 1904 was a disaster. 1936 was an unfortunate choice. Sydney 2000 had those mascots. But to find the true icon of bad Olympics, the worst run of the worst run games in history, we have to go to St. Louis in 1904. And I know that sounds like a clickbait header, but trust me, these are monstrous. So originally, these games were destined for Chicago, but St. Louis bullied and threatened the Olympic Committee until they got it moved to coincide with their World Fair, the Louisiana Purchase Exhibition. I am so sorry, that was... We're not gonna try that again. All of the mistakes of Paris in 1900 were repeated, and worse, somehow. And what's better is there were a few new disasters sprinkled on top. Mmm, a delicious racist cherry on top of a disastrous cupcake. The first and most glaring issue of these games is that 80% of competitors were from the USA. Another 10% were from Canada. The rest of the world was represented by very, very few competitors. And unsurprisingly, the US won 248 out of 285 medals. I mean, this is not the international competition that was intended when the Olympics uh, were established. Again, these games took way too long. Four and a half months is too long for an Olympics. Again, the Olympics was completely overshadowed by the World Fair that tried to absorb it. And it would become an American championship rather than an actual international competition. The worst legacy of this Olympics by a long way. And something the Olympic Committee is very keen to forget was part of the World Fair. Um, so in attractions at this World Fair were things like industrial exhibits, inventions, the world's largest musical instrument, Abraham Lincoln's log cabin, um, new foods, new everything, as well as a human zoo. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this zoo is hopefully something we'd not repeat today. An an it was called an anthropological day. And the centerpiece of this fair was a village, a Philippine village, featuring live specimens fresh from America's Philippine colonies. This is obviously hugely, hugely problematic, and the idea was that they would gather people from all over the world, so pygmies from Central Africa, um, we've got South, Amer South Africans as well, we've got uh, Great Plains Indians, we've got all sorts around. And they would put on all these savages, all these others, and the idea was to deliberately compare them to the futurism on display, right? We are contrasting technological advancement and futurism with the other. And the idea is to show a kind of imperialism, a manufactured racial superiority. The man who ran the games in St. Louis, James E. Sullivan, had a dream. He wanted to glorify American style athleticism and America generally. The display of these peoples was meant to show a cultural dominance alongside the uh, intellectual dominance of the fair and the athletic dominance of the games. So it all came together into this kind of, yeah, gross display of nationalism. And he thought, why not just combine them? And so, in one of the worst events in Olympics history, he decided to have the people on display in the human zoo compete in Olympics-style events in an attempt to promote systems of racial superiority, eugenics, all that jazz that was popular in the early 1900s. He joined forces with a man called William McGee, which is such an American name, uh, who was either eager to gather data for something he was putting together of a racial hierarchy in terms of athletics. Yeah. Um, Unsurprisingly, the people in the human zoo weren't keen on this plan. Uh, they had agents, right? They were performers. Um, but eventually they, they haggled. Certain events like water polo, yeah, were dropped. And uh, other, unsurprisingly, this went poorly. Uh, they were last minute, so there wasn't enough advertising and nobody really came to watch. Uh, they hadn't bothered really explaining the rules to the competitors. So they got confused by things like a starting gun. Um, or the finish line, some tried to duck under it, or some stopped in front of it because they didn't realise they had to break it. There wasn't really enough evidence or data for McGee's attempt to 
like uh, stratify racial hierarchies, and it was kind of a disaster. But for James Sullivan, there was a silver lining. Surely, the inability to play a proper royal game of tennis was a great sign of racial inferiority among these peoples, never mind the fact he never bothered to explain the rules. Um, surely the fact that cultures who fought with spears couldn't throw the javelin as far, you know, a javelin that they are very unfamiliar with, uh, surely that was a sign they were just weaker than everybody else. He believed that this event, and a repeat that autumn, proved the march of progress of white America. Conveniently, it chose to hand wave away the fact that an African American won the 400 meter hurdles, and that two men from the Tswana people, uh, were from the south of Africa, were working the fair, and decided to join in on the marathon on a whim, and came fifth and twelfth, despite the fact that one of them was chased by a dog for an extra couple of miles. As disastrous and proudly racist as these Olympics were, um, there were still some positives to come from this. Uh, it was the first game to bother with gold, silver and bronze medals, um, and establish that tradition. And more importantly, the marathon held here has gone down in infamy as one of the worst events, but potentially funniest marathons of all time. Uh, we've already talked about the two Tswana people, the first, actually the first black Africans to compete at the Olympics, um, even if they weren't initially meant to be there. But there, there were more surprises along the way. For one thing, they hadn't bothered to put any water stations up apart from at the halfway mark, so you had to run 13 miles to get some water. Uh, this was another of James Sullivan's mad theories, testing the limits of human endurance without water. Um, the course was a mess, with really brutal hills, and layers, inches of dust on the roads. Um, there were cracked stones across the roadway, which threatened to break ankles. Um, the racers had to dodge traffic because they hadn't closed the roads as well. I mentioned the dust, the inches of dust. Um, when they were running through this, this would come up and not only partially blind them, but it would coat the inside of their lungs. Uh, William Garcia collapsed halfway round um, the dust coated his esophagus and had been sort of ripping his stomach lining. If he hadn't got uh, emergency medical treatment, he probably would have died. Right? This was not just incompetent, this was an almost lethal marathon. The Cuban competitor, Carvajal, who had only managed to get to the Olympics because he went round Cuba raising money by doing performances of his long running, um, he had quite an adventure. He was a very popular competitor. Halfway round, uh, he stopped a car to, to let them know what was happening and stole some of their peaches for a snack. He then got bored and had a nap on the course. He didn't finish. Meanwhile, the Americans, of course, took every advantage they could possibly get. Cheating at the 1904 Olympics. Can you imagine such a thing? An event designed to show the supremacy of white America and they cheated. Uh, the first to cross the line, a man named Laws, he took on a car for 11 miles of the of the trip, and if someone hadn't pointed out, he probably would have claimed that medal. Um, the next man, Hicks, um, the one who ended up getting the gold medal, he suffered from cramps, cramps about halfway through because no one gave him any food or water for the 26 mile run. And so he was given a drink of egg whites and brandy, as you do, um, but also strychnine, which is usually used for rat poison, but is also, at the time, was used as an upper a drug to keep you going when nothing else will. It then took him another dose of this, and a bit more brandy, and he started hallucinating. He walked most of the last few miles, and didn't actually cross the line himself. He seemed to not really register what was going on in the crowd around him and got confused, and his coaches carried him the last few metres and just put a gold medal, medal round his neck. Um, yeah, quite appropriate that the world's most disastrous Olympics had the world's most disastrous marathon as well. If you thought that was interesting, please do give me a like and subscribe. It really, it's why I do it. I just, I'm an addict for those likes. Um, and why not try out one of my other videos? Here, or here, or here, I haven't decided where I'm putting them, but somewhere around me. Um, you might enjoy them.